all of you are keeping well and your families as well. So, uh, is it, am I visible to you, Aditya? Can you update me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Very much. Okay, okay. So, uh, I'll quickly share my screen and set up the quick context for today's uh, meetup that we are gathered here today. Uh, so, just give me a moment. I'll just quickly share my screen. All right. Is it visible to you, Aditya? Can you see that? Okay. So this meetup is all about the career in data science, AI, analytics, or the different dimensions of data science, what you all have been, uh, you know, been hearing and listening to these jargons around data science. So to uh, break that you know, myth or maybe the doubt what we have got, because there are a lot of individuals who have been coming to us and who have been uh, mentioning that they are from different backgrounds. Some of them are from commerce background. Some of them are core engineering background, like mechanical, electrical. But data science, since it's one of the most booming segment and the booming sector. So this question always hits everybody's mind that whether I am the best fit for that program and what skill sets should I have or do I have, or I have to upgrade myself so that the industries will pick me up with open hands or welcome me, me with open hands. So for answering all these questions and the doubts, we have today with us, Dr. Vinay Kulkarni. So he is the director and mentor at AJS School of Data Science and Cybersecurity. And he will be uh, discussing all these points and we will have a quick, uh, so we welcome to you, sir, on board. So, uh, and all the individuals who have joined us. So a very warm welcome to all of you again. And uh, a quick brief about Sir's profile. So uh, Dr. Kulkarni, he is the, as I mentioned, the faculty, the director at AJS School of Data Science. He uh, comes from a very uh, sound background from PhD in computer uh, uh, aid manufacturing from IIT Bombay, BTEC from IIT Bombay. More than two decades of vast experience he has gotten providing the tech solutions, designing and implementing for the complete automation processes. He has been guiding, mentoring the, uh, the, the uh, and consulting the data science enthusiasts like you who are among us in this virtual platform today, this evening, the practitioners as well as the working professional, the enterprises as well, on different uh, data science and AI skill sets uh, like Hadoop, Spark, Statistics. Uh, he has, uh, in the past, he was also, he has also worked as a VP uh, for innovation and incubations uh, for Geometrics Limited. So uh, this is a quick brief about, sir. A quick agenda for today's uh, meetup, you all must be aware about, although I have given a brief about that. So we'll see the different dimensions of AI data science. How can a person with no technical background, no tech, uh, coding skills can get into data science? Or if somebody would be coming from the same background, what would be the added advantage for them? Or uh, we will be talking about the different, where the future is heading to. There are individuals, I believe in this meetup that uh, we have got the statistics. There are individuals who have been working for the last 10, 15 plus years, and they are looking forward. You have been calling us as well in between. Uh, so they have been working for 18 plus years and who are still uh, you know, uh, confused that whether this is the right time they can make a switch into data science or not. So we will be touching up all these uh, uh, data points. And uh, at the end, so uh, we will be having a quick uh, takeaway session uh, that this in which uh, if anybody wants to get into the data science, what are the ways we will be covering up these points as well. So about ages, quick brief. So we are primarily through the videos, what we have played, you got to know that we are primarily an institution and we are not into, uh, it's an autonomous institution. Uh, we are absolutely into disruptive technologies like data science, AI, machine learning, cloud computing, cybersecurity. And we started our journey in the year 2002 with the support of Bharti Airtel, because that was the same time guys, when the disruption started happening in telecom management. So we are always have been supporting the institution, the individuals like you and the companies as well across the boundaries in order to uh, provide the skill sets which is required for the current, uh, the requirement what the companies have got nowadays. So now almost uh, eight years back, uh, we got into the dis discussion with IBM and we set up business analytics and IBM uh, labs, which we provide the participants so that they can work upon various uh, projects and these are all virtual labs and we have rolled out various programs that you have seen in the videos as well in data science and uh, core AI programs and cyber security as well. We are the official score partner with GMAT, TOEFL and GRE as well. Uh, we introduced, we have introduced almost this year's one of the largest event that is AGES, Graham, AGES Data Science Congress. So this is one of the largest event in the entire globe. 
you can go and I will not talk about more on that. You can go and check it out on uh, the Google and the YouTube. This is the mega event. All the top-notch companies, you name it, who are all the CTOs, CIOs, they gather together and discuss about what is happening, the innovations in that data science congress. We initiated almost a decade back, Aegis Gramble Award. That award is known as Oscars in Innovation, in which we do reward the companies who are coming with various innovations. So you can go through these uh, platforms and we'll, you will get more idea about that. Uh, we had the we had it with the Industria, uh, the NDA Academy Association over the past uh, decades and the years time. So IBM, I already talked about, they joined hands with us. With them, we have established a state-of-the-art virtual cloud labs on analytics and cyber securities and cloud computing. And these are all cloud high-end labs. NVIDIA, most of you must have heard of NVIDIA. They are into graphic cards and GPUs, but over the past few years, NVIDIA, they have become the world largest leader in deep learning and AI. They have also come, they join hands with us. Uh, uh, so UBTech, if you come to our institution, you will meet with a lot of uh, humanoids and the robots whom we are training upon on various skill sets as well. So robot, UBTech is a, one of the largest, uh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, robotics and AI company. They have also joined hands with us. AWS, all you must have heard of Amazon Web Services. They have also come, they join hands with us. With AWS support participants, they will get additional access who join the program at ages, who work with, with ages. They get additional access on the entire Amazon labs to work upon various projects. And there are thousands of dollars uh, participants will get on the various courses, which they use it for the reference material. They can use it. So it's a quick academy and the industry collaboration that we had. At. And these are the programs we have rolled out. This is the full-time data science and postgraduate program in data science, business analytics, and big data. It's an on-campus program. Uh, looking at the pandemic situation, we're talking the live interactive motor delivery. Similarly, we have rolled out postgraduate program in cybersecurity. These are all uh, programs which are equivalent to masters, uh, live interactive and full-time. We have also initiated core program in applied AI, machine learning, and deep learning for those individuals who are uh, completely looking forward to get into core AI and machine learning, high advanced level of AI and uh, enabled uh, systems, and they want to work in these industries. So these are the different uh, programs, what we have rolled out. So it's a quick brief about the program. We are recently, we are going to launch full stack development program as well with the, with the IBM. All these programs we offer with those giants, uh, IBM and uh, what I have discussed in the early slides. So without any further ado, I, so let me uh, stop my screen here. So uh, may I please invite uh, uh, Dr. Kulkarni on the virtual dais. Very welcome to you, sir. And hopefully we have the candidates, they are still joining in. So over to you, the dice is yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ritin. Uh, can you confirm I'm audible clearly? Yes, yes, very much. We can hear you, sir. Okay. Good evening, everyone. And thanks for uh, joining in today. I know this is a question that is uh, foremost on people's mind. There is so much being talked about uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and uh, I have my background. So am I appropriate for the field or is the field appropriate for me? Uh, so see, these are some of the questions uh, that uh, we will take up and hopefully by the end of the session, uh, most of you will have some answers to your uh, questions. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen first. Uh, just give me a minute. Yeah, can uh, Ritin, can you confirm that you can see my screen? Ah, uh, yes, yes, very much, sir. We can see. Okay, okay, great. So I'll use this uh, presentation as a, as a guideline, maybe for the next uh, you know, 35 to 40 minutes, I'll be speaking upon uh, various topics. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can put them in the chat box and uh, we will uh, take them uh, either at an opportunate time during the session or towards the end, uh, definitely we will uh, go through many of those uh, questions, okay? So <clears throat> data science, uh, is it for me? Okay, so that is primarily the question that uh, we will be trying to answer today, right? Okay. So let me um, start talking about, uh, you know, some of the visible aspects of AI uh, and, you know, the, the part of AI today that is very popular is uh, machine learning, okay? Uh, so we will later on in one of the slide also take a look at what exactly is the relationship between artificial intelligence and machine learning? How do the two fit together? Okay. But uh, if you look at these photographs, 
uh, we have these photographs labeled right from 2014 to let us say 2020 and uh, the one thing which is common across all these photographs is that none of them are of real people okay i repeat none of them are of real people uh, they were created by the computer based on uh, a description broad description given to the to the computer which of course has been trained based on certain uh, data related to human beings right and uh, so on the one hand there is training of uh, data and on the other hand there is uh, a, a you know brief description of what i am looking for and the computer is able to generate uh, these photographs okay the point to be noted here is that if you look at the photograph uh, from 2014 you see that it is it is a bit grainy it is a bit fuzzy it's not very sharp uh, but look at the photographs that has been generated in 2020 okay now by the way these are generated by uh, you know ai systems called as uh, uh, generative adversarial networks okay which is one of the advanced techniques that are being used today for uh, image manipulation uh, you know enhancement of image quality and so on right okay so this is just to give you a blink glimpse of what uh, ai and ml is capable of uh, today it doesn't stop with that let us uh, take a look at uh, certain other examples of uh, artificial intelligence in action okay so i will uh, very briefly show you a video right um again uh, ritin can you confirm you can hear the audio ah uh, yes it is very much loud and clear okay Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Above the Line, an intimate conversation with some of Hollywood's most recognizable faces. I'm Mark Ellis, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Tom Cruise. <laughs> Honored and privileged to be here. Mark. Uh, next name is. <laughs> good to see you, uh, as always, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, Ewan McGregor to my left. Uh, to his left is Robert Downey Jr. Hi, I'm Robert Downey Jr. And to his left is George Lucas. Well, I apologize. Uh, Earlier, I had a burrito, and I've, I think I've got the uh, Kessel runs. So, I knew something. I thought it was a gas leak. Well, I just smells want to wet. apologize. It smells I wet. I want to apologize. It's I know very wet. you guys were all thinking it. George. Gentlemen, the world's gone. Okay. Well, the interview is uh, pretty long, and uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, those of you who are interested can uh, uh, you know, take the link uh, later on. but the interesting part is that uh, none of the characters in this interview are real i mean of course they 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 they, they represent real people uh, hollywood stars and directors and so on but uh, in the interview itself it is not the people who are present but these are all computer generated images okay and uh, those of you who can recognize some of those actors uh, you know very popular uh, actors and you can see that their mannerisms have been uh, uh, duplicated over here their voice has been duplicated and uh, you know practically every aspect of their personality is duplicated over here again one of uh, uh, the possibilities that exist with artificial intelligence today i will show you another quick video uh, again a very interesting video this time it is from boston dynamics and it shows a robot in action So for those of you who are aware, walking on ice, even for us human beings, is very tough because it is very slippery, and uh, humans also tend to fall. Take a look at this robot, which is uh, balancing itself wonderfully on this very slippery surface.
okay i will i will stop at that now you, you must be wondering why i am showing you these videos okay now these are some of the advanced uh, applications of uh, artificial intelligence uh, so the question that you should ask yourself is what kind of people are required to build systems like this particularly a robot uh, like the one you just uh, saw is it only software engineers is it only people with it background right now you know i am a mechanical engineer and those of you who are mechanical engineers will uh, will relate to this uh, you know as part of mechanical engineering you you learn uh, mechanisms you learn control systems okay so isn't it that all of these disciplines also are coming together into this right uh, so in order to build a robot that is so sophisticated uh does it not require mechanical engineers electrical engineers electronics engineers okay uh then uh, it of course software people right mathematicians people who understand statistics uh and it's not only engineers that i'm talking about over here right so today we have systems which are financial systems uh, stock market trading systems uh, there are so many other examples that i can go on and on and in fact we do have some of these examples coming up later on also so the whole point is you require or there is scope for people with various backgrounds to jump into this exciting field called artificial intelligence right uh, <clears throat> so we will keep on reinforcing on this particular uh, aspect as we go along right so first of all very quickly let us look at what is ai what is machine learning and what is analytics okay now uh, you know these slides i have taken from um, publications from nascom okay so those of you who are interested can go to the nascom website and download some of these uh, reports that they have generated very nicely explained uh, reports which cover ai ml what is the scope of ai what is the scope of ml uh, what are the applications like for instance uh, if you look at uh, you know the definition of ai that that they have it is the ability of machines to perform functions similar to that of a human mind uh, and you know what what does a human mind do perceiving learning problem solving etc right and uh, if you look at specific application areas you have advanced analytics natural language processing computer vision robotics process automation speech recognition you know some of uh, some examples of these you have already seen in the videos that i have uh, shown you right and if you go down below further uh, you have the applications exploded to include uh many more uh, you know uh, sub areas predictive modeling demand forecasting and then you can start relating it relating it with uh, specific uh, you know uh, application areas right now what can ai do this is another view of the same thing uh, ai can hear see speak feel ai can think understand assist perceive plan ai can act physically creatively cognitively and reactively right and then you have uh, the various areas written under here natural language processing audio and speech machine vision navigation visualization and so on and so forth right and what is the foundation foundation is statistics you need to have knowledge uh, in one or many of these areas uh, statistics econometrics optimization uh, computer science game theory you know uh, there are various uh, areas uh, it's not necessary that you, you should be an expert in all of the areas don't get me wrong there but uh, these are some of the areas where if you have expertise you can very easily jump into uh, ai and ml and uh, really build good systems okay right so let us come to this big question about what is ai what is ml what is deep learning right so ai is like a big umbrella it includes so many things okay uh, people have been talking about ai since the 1950s and uh, the most visible part of ai right now is uh, what we call as machine learning okay so you know linear regression logistic regression uh, clustering classification all of these are part of machine learning and they are used to build the systems that you just saw a very specific part of machine learning and in fact the most uh, sophisticated part and uh, 
uh, most uh, challenging part right now, which requires a lot of resources, is what we call as deep learning. And uh, so deep learning systems are primarily based on, um, let us say, to put it very simply, neural networks. Uh, and uh, you know they are a specific kind of machine learning algorithm. So here we have it. Artificial intelligence is the overall field that you're talking about, which includes uh, natural language uh, understanding, vision, control systems, robotics, all of that. Machine learning, which are specific techniques which drive one or many of these systems. And then, of course, you have a very specific kind of machine learning, which is known as uh, deep learning and which thrives on data. Okay. So people have been talking about artificial intelligence since 1950s. I said that already, right? But why is it uh, that AI and ML have become so popular only now? Uh, the, the one big reason is basically because data is freely available at this point in time. You know, a lot of data is getting generated. We are get, get there, generating data using our, um, let us say, cell phones, computers, all the social media tools that we use. Uh, data is getting generated on the shop floor by uh, machines which use IoT devices, Internet of Things devices. Okay, in general, the internet has enabled or it has actually democratized uh, the process of data generation, and uh, anybody and everybody can generate data. And this data hides a lot of important aspects about our personalities. And uh, you know that is the reason why, in general, AI and ML is uh, right now thriving so much, just because data is available. The mathematical basis of all this have been in existence for more than 70 years, right? And uh, they were all waiting for data to be available, which is now available. OK, <clears throat> what is data science? Uh, well, it involves a lot of uh, hard work, a lot of steps. Uh, it starts with, uh, let us say, you start working on a problem, so you have to define the problem very clearly. You have to acquire data. Many a times, uh, you know, the data as you need it will not be available, so you may have to get more data. Bulk of the time you spend cleaning up the data because, you know, finally AI and ML uh, systems, they, they are computer systems and they, they require data to be in a very definite format. Uh, without containing any dirt in them, so-called. So we have to spend a lot of time cleaning the data, right? Then you go through a process of uh, data analysis and visualization, some kind of data processing, where you understand the data. And after doing all this, then you come to modeling, right? So when I talk about machine learning, machine learning is nothing but uh, what is what is being done inside this box called as modeling, okay? So once you do this, you come out with specific machine learning algorithms, and uh, then you focus on process automation. So like for instance, if you want to control, let us say, a power plant using uh, uh, machine learning, right? What you will do is you will first, first of all, get the data uh, from the various sensors uh, and various processes that are active, you pass it through this, uh, these steps, uh, data cleaning, visualization, modeling, right? And once you generate a model uh, to be able to predict the health of the entire system, whether there is going to be a breakdown of particular machine, okay? So all of this can be done using the data that is available, right? So this entire process now needs to be automated, okay? It's not a one-time affair. Data come continuously keeps coming in, model needs to be updated, new models need to be generated, right? And uh, the whole thing needs to be validated, generated, validated again and again before it can be really used for uh, prediction, guiding, recommendations, so on and so forth, right? So doing all this automatically is the next and the final step, right? So under process automation, all of the other steps are encapsulated, okay? They're involved. And uh, then this becomes a continuous action, right? So a data scientist uh, will probably be involved in all of these activities, starting from talking to the customer, understanding requirements, acquiring the data, cleaning it, processing it, visualizing it, modeling, 
and then laying out the process for the process automation part of it. Okay. So this is what we would call as data science. Analytics is a more traditional uh, term and it predates AI and ML, right? What is analytics? Nothing but systematic computational analysis of data or generation of statistics, okay? Uh, it is also the information resulting from systematic analysis of data or statistics. It also involves communicating meaningful patterns in data to the stakeholders, right? And uh, drawing conclusions based on, uh, you know, all the other steps, right? So analytics basically deals with the processing of data and the processing of data in, in a particular way uh, falls under the domain of machine learning, right? So you can say that machine learning or anything above that, you can call it as advanced, advanced analytics. Right. Finally, you come out with uh, certain trends and patterns uh, which are able to predict based on which you can make recommendations and so on, right? So if you want to put it all together, uh, you have analytics, you have machine learning and AI, advanced analytics at the center of it is data science. So data science, as we saw, involves all of this, right? And what are the disciplines that are, are touched by, by these uh, areas? Of course, you need to understand uh, relevant portions of mathematics, have a good understanding of statistics, because at some point in time, uh, good understanding of statistics helps you become a good machine learning engineer, okay? Then you need to know about algorithms, development of systems, which falls under the domain of computer science. Okay, and the third part, which is where bulk of the question related to is data science meant for me gets really answered is business or domain knowledge, right? If you are a good mathematician and statistician, if you are a good computer scientist, scientist who can code, who understands all the algorithms, but if you have no knowledge about the domain, you know, if you don't have an understanding of how robot, robots need to be built, you don't have an understanding of how images need to be processed. You don't have an understanding of how chemical and power plants work, how machines work on the shop floor, right? How financial markets work, how banks work, how healthcare works, right? Uh, how will you ever build any AI or ML system? So business domain knowledge, I would say is the most, most, most critical part in all this, right? So if you are interested in any of these domains, okay, I repeat. So you may be an engineer, you may be a finance person, you may be an HR person, you may have interest in uh, healthcare, you may have interest in, in architecture, you may have interest in uh, control systems, whatever it is, you have domain knowledge. And if you have domain knowledge, you should look actively for uh, mechanisms by which data related to your domain knowledge can be used to create machine learning and AI systems, right? Mathematics and statistics can be picked up in a, in a, in a given period of time. Let us say less than a year, the relevant portions of mathematics and statistics can be picked up. Algorithms can be learned. Uh, computer, I mean, architecture of software systems can be learned. But if you ask me, the most difficult part of all this is uh, developing the relevant business or domain knowledge. Okay, this is the most, most, most difficult part. Uh, and if you have this, or if you are interested in this, then believe me, the other two steps, mathematics and statistics and computer science, uh, can be acquired in a time-bound manner. Okay, I'm not going. I'm not saying that it's going to be overnight. You will make require time, maybe a year, maybe a year and a half, but it is definitely much more easier to understand mathematics and statistics and computer science than it is to understand or acquire business or domain knowledge. Okay. <clears throat> so let us come back to this question of uh, AI, ML analytics, and uh, why now? Although, you know, I have answered this question to some measure already, right? 
So let us try and answer this question. Question by looking at this particular graph. Okay, this graph is showing you the total amount of data that is passing through the internet, if you can call the internet as a pipeline. You know, so much of data is is passing through the internet, and this is a trend of data generated and uh, traveling through the internet over the period of time. So we are already in 2021. So definitely, it has uh, progressed much further than this, and maybe uh, crashed through the ceiling, right? So what is the takeaway from this particular diagram? There has been an exponential increase in the amount of data that is getting generated. Who is responsible? You are responsible. I am responsible. The devices that we use are responsible. Uh, the uh, you know process parameters that we monitor. Internet of Things, the devices that we use, they are responsible, right? Uh, shop floor machines are responsible. Chemical plants, power plants, uh, you know, stock markets, they are responsible. So they are all adding to the data that is getting generated on a daily basis. And we have huge amount of data that is available, right? So the event of the last 20 years have fundamentally changed the way data is created. We create more of it more of the data each day. It is not a waste product, but a buried treasure waiting to be discovered by curious, motivated researchers and practitioners who see these trends and are reaching out to meet the current challenges, right? So the whole point is that the data that we generate or data that gets generated actually hides or encapsulates a lot of things, a lot of insights, a lot of trends. A uh, lot of potential knowledge that can be used to understand people, to understand systems, right? And uh, if you have the domain knowledge, collect the data in that domain knowledge and, you know, start off on this particular journey. It's what we are trying to say here, right? So if you look at what existed maybe 20, 25 years ago, uh, data was like, you know, the, the coconut. Uh, the water, the, when you break open a coconut, everything is predictable, right? You know what is there inside. Uh, that data long back could be accommodated inside uh, computer systems, floppy drives, disk drives, and the nature of data was very regulated. It could be expressed in the form of tables, what we call as structured data, okay? And uh, the situation to the right shows what is happening right now. Right now, we have no control over the data that is getting generated, right? Uh, anything can come through in the form of data. The data, instead of getting stored locally, we are not talking about, we are now talking about cloud-based storage, cloud-based computing. Why? Because, uh, you know, the capacity that we have locally is no longer sufficient to store all the data that gets generated. So you have to move to the cloud. And the diagram that you see on the right-hand side is nothing but a screenshot of a data center, which, which, which is capable of storing uh, huge amounts of data, right? And finally, the data has moved from being structured to unstructured data, okay? Uh, audio, video, images, comments, uh, you know, so many other things uh, that we, we keep on generating and exchanging, right? So bulk of the data that is generated today is, uh, is unstructured data, and we have to make sense out of it, right? Okay. <clears throat> so bringing all this together, enterprises are now looking at monetizing data, okay? Uh, how to make best use of data? So why do we have uh, an explosion in, let us say, e-commerce, right? Uh, basically because data is available. You know, the e-commerce uh, websites, uh, they know the likes and dislikes of people, uh, you know, regional uh, biases, uh, age biases, gender biases, you know. So they are all, all able to put this together and uh, come out with uh, models that describe like when will they like it and uh, on the one hand on the other hand you know using advances in uh, supply chain management which also includes ai and ml by the way they are able to put these things together 
and uh, you know come out with uh, companies like amazon flipkart is what i am talking about okay but it's not limited to this so, so this what this slide is trying to say, tell you is that companies are bullish on on the data that is available and they want to make use of that data right so 93% uh, firm see potential value of data and 47% are already monetizing it and these are figures based from a survey that was carried out in india of indian companies okay <clears throat> now let us understand global trends and at this point in time you can make a note of this particular report uh, the artificial intelligence uh, index uh, report uh, you know generated by the stanford university so you can google this and this is freely available for download uh, fantastic report you can go through it it will uh, you know improve your understanding of what is ai ml and uh, what is data processing all about right so in this report uh, they have shown or they have projected the uh, corporate investment in ai uh, you know up to 2020 and you can see the uh, phenomenal increase in in investment okay in just about 5 years in just about 5 years it has uh, more become more than six times okay the investment in this particular uh, field right ai adoption by organizations uh, globally right so again as you can see here india has been uh, you know mentioned separately uh, and practically all regions of the world uh, are involved in adopting ai and ml based uh, systems okay um <clears throat> just to bring home the point that ai and ml is not limited to the uh, it people or people from computer science background okay even banks have started talking about uh, artificial intelligence in their communication and you can see that our own reserve bank of india is also one among them uh, which has been laying focus on ai right so ai is not limited to or not owned or not the property of any specific field it is globally applicable right okay now let us look at corporate earning calls okay you know every year the companies uh, uh, public limited companies uh, come out with their uh, annual reports and they hold uh, uh, earning calls uh, you know kind of uh, press conferences Uh, where they give idea about what what has happened in the past and what is likely to happen in the future how are they performing and so on and these companies also are mentioning a very explicitly ai ml in 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 such reports and in such calls which basically means that it is it is now becoming all pervasive right you you go to a particular place and you can be sure that AI and ML has some application. People are aware, and they are trying to build some systems out of it, right? Which are the countries of the world uh, that have embraced AI and ML? Okay, so other than the dark shaded regions, all other regions of the world, which includes India, by the way, and India has a published AI policy, which was published in two thousand, I think, eighteen by the government of India, right? so as you can see almost the entire world uh, is bullish about uh, the applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning right uh, relative skill penetration rate uh, by country right you can see india right on top of that and yet we are facing uh, resource crunches why basically because there is so high demand okay now india being uh you know the it hub of the world a lot of companies are offloading their ai and ml related work to india not only that in the last couple of years indian entrepreneurs and indian startups also have started consuming uh, or they have a hunger for ai and ml talent within india itself okay so this requirement is only going to increase in the future so this graph should give you an idea about where all the opportunities exist 
related to AI and ML. Okay. So, <clears throat> is it for me? Right. I think by now you should have understood that uh, for every domain there is an application which which can take advantage of artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning principle concepts techniques systems and so on. So to that extent, if whatever expertise you have, whatever education you have, right, you are likely to become or you already are a domain expert. Okay. All that you need to do is look for application in, in that particular domain. And like I told you, the other allied things like knowledge of the required mathematics and statistics, knowledge of the required programming languages, uh, you know, software development skills, software architecture, all that can be learned in a given time frame. So is it for me? The big answer is yes. Whoever you are, whatever be your background, you can be dead sure that there is an AI and ML application relevant to you and probably waiting for you to jump into it, right? Okay. <clears throat> so this is one way of asking, answering the question, right? Does AI have a role to play in marketing? Yes. Sales? Yes. Customer service? Yes. IT? Yes. Operations? Yes. HR? Yes. Financial fintech, yes. Health healthcare tech, yes. And you know this this can only go on, right? Since I have spoken so much about all of uh, the areas, uh, hopefully this slide will cement your thoughts and and convey to you this uh, statement that whatever be your background, whatever be your interest, you have a role to play in potentially developing AI and ML based systems, right? Okay, let us take industry wise, uh, uh, you know, application or usage. So at this point in time, the greatest users are high tech and telecom, followed by automotive and assembly, financial services, business, legal and professional services, healthcare and pharma, consumer goods and retails, right? So, but you know, this, this is not a very exhaustive list. This is the primary areas where AI and ML is being used at this point. Now, which of the functions within these companies uh, where AI and ML is applicable? So this is nothing but an explosion of this diagram, one level deeper, right? So human resources, manufacturing, marketing and sales, product and service development, risk management, service operations, you know, you name it. And uh, there are applications based on AI and ML in these specific areas, okay? Again, to help you to answer the question yourself, let me take you to this report. Again, developed by NASCOM and available on their website. Uh, this report is now maybe two years old, and I think they are coming out with the latest report this year, if I'm not mistaken, right? So if you go to the NASCOM website and search for uh, AI game changers, you will get a link to these, uh, these reports. Right, where a lot of things are very nicely explained. What is AI? What is analytics? What are the applications? And not only that, they also talk about uh, game changers. Okay. Uh, now, to excuse me a little bit, I'm facing some problems. So, just give me two minutes. Hello, you are there, sir. Hello. Is it my video freezed? IT, can you help? Sir, it seems that uh, Vinesar is not audible to me as well. Okay, some video, I believe. Hello. So he is there in the meeting, or maybe some network issue is there, I believe. 
So let me check with him just a moment. Uh, Ritin, am I audible again? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you now. Okay, okay. I had uh, some internet issues. So... Okay, okay. Sure, sir. Sure. We can continue. Now. Yes. Yeah, okay. So I'll keep my video off uh, for some time at least. Yes, sir. So at least we'll have a, you'll have a better bandwidth. Right. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I was talking about this, uh, uh, you know, NASCOM report. Which, has, which talks about the top 50 game changers. And they have covered so many use cases uh, in that, you know. By and large, the use cases deal with, you know, the <clears throat> major areas that we have already gone through, okay. But very specifically, uh, the sub areas in a particular field, like for instance, uh, this particular slide talks about natural language processing for intelligent sales and marketing, right? What are the problem areas, how they can be solved and which are the companies which are working in, in this uh, particular area. So this is the nature of the report that uh, has got generated, right? So <clears throat> they focus on, on, on uh, startups, India-based startup, the kind of problem that they are trying to solve using AI and ML. And it is a good read. And it, it is very important to go through such reports so that you have a very good understanding of the various applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So again, so that you, you can uh, make a note, uh, the link is given at the bottom. So either you can take a screenshot or just make a quick note of uh, this particular report, right? Okay. So by now you should understand or you should have understood that uh, really speaking, AI is like a big plate of uh, fruits, right? Now some of the fruits you may like, some of the fruits you may not like, okay? But there definitely is a fruit for everyone, okay? So <clears throat> this is what I would basically like to convey to you through this particular slide. Now there are related uh, matters like age, skill set, experience, domain knowledge. Now these are other questions which people generally ask, right? Uh, I've already crossed 40, I've already crossed 45. So is it the right age to get into AI and ML? I don't have the right kind of skill set so should I be thinking about AI and ML? I don't, I have experience in other areas. Should I be thinking about AI and ML, right? Uh, domain knowledge, people have a question, but then that question comes out of ignorance in the sense, I don't know anything about AI and ML. So should I be getting into AI and ML? Okay, now based on the emphasis that I have been trying to lay so far that the most difficult thing to pick up is the domain knowledge. So if you already have a domain knowledge or if you have experience in a particular domain or a field, right? Uh, you already have the, the, the most difficult skill set that you require, right? And age typically is not a barrier. Of course, uh, you know, the youngsters People who are just out of college or starting their career, you know, they they have a choice. They can get into multiple areas. They can, uh, you know, also change their domain and so on. But for experienced people, let me give you a very specific example. Suppose your role is that of a project manager, right? And uh, you have been managing projects. How will uh, knowledge of AI and ML help you? Okay. Now, one thing is, uh, learning AI and ML to be able to code and develop systems in AI and ML, right? But with your experience as a project manager, 
uh, you know how to manage projects you know how to build teams you know how to communicate within the team and communicate with the with the customer you know how to ensure timelines are met you know many things right so having knowledge of ai and ml will help you in fact and and you know once you do that you should not try to become a a programmer a full time programmer yourself because you will be doing injustice to yourself right so what can you do as a project manager now you have acquired artificial intelligence and machine learning knowledge skill set you have done some projects yourself right now you have potent weapons in your hand you can engage in a fruitful conversation with the potential customers you can constitute or build your team with capable people and since you will have not only the domain knowledge but also knowledge about ai and ml the team will look up to you the team will respect you right so you can become a much much better uh, project manager in the area which delivers ai and ml based solutions right you may not yourself sit and code ai and ml algorithms or you may not sit and uh, acquire data and clean data but you understand the entire process right and that is where you will add value okay so that that is just one example so similar questions you can ask for yourself you know i have xyz age i have xyz experience right uh so how can i leverage my age how can i leverage my experience how may how can i leverage my domain knowledge and get into this exciting field of artificial intelligence and machine learning okay now just to paint a wide picture what are the skill sets that are required so again these are based on uh, uh you know the data science jobs and what they put out as part of their requirement right so if you look at this knowledge of ai deep learning natural language processing software development neural networks they come so much more later on in the list right first and foremost is your ability to analyze you know understand the situation define the problem uh, come out with solution these are the skills which are basically required the others can be acquired right statistics yes i mean many people are scared of statistics no need to be scared because we are not trying to become statisticians over here we are not interested in creating let us say <clears throat> uh, another set of statistical tests or formula for others to use but our goal as uh, people who learn statistics is to understand the basis of machine learning okay how statistics plays an important role in machine learning and you know this should form a very important part of your learning process if you want to get into ai and ml you do need to understand statistics whatever anybody else can may say because at some point in time it is your knowledge of statistics and certain mathematical tools that are going to help you right communication okay very important you should be able to communicate because you know most of the time you will not be working alone you will be working in a team with customers so on and so forth right so the whole point here is that what you might have thought about as very important skill sets right as you can see here are coming much later in the list the ones earlier except for maybe machine learning knowledge which is essential the others are fairly generic skills analysis statistics communication mathematics visualization you know how is this related to ai and ml right these skills are common skill sets okay other skill sets in demand yes now very specifically if you want to talk about ai and ml and uh, you want to do things hands on then these are the skill sets that one may need to have python r sql uh, understanding of agile methodology uh, development full stack development fundamentals and techniques and tools uh, ability to work in the cloud and uh, 
manage big data okay and not to forget domain knowledge and project management so as you can see i keep coming back to these two things right domain knowledge and project management absolutely critical very essential i should add i think communication also to this right but i don't have the background well yes uh, as you saw uh, <clears throat> depending on on your uh, stage of your career right uh, whether you are starting a fresh or you are already experienced you can have always have a plan to acquire the background that you need right and for the most time this background can be acquired within a year okay uh, i told you it, it is going to take time it is not something that will happen overnight because we are talking about fundamentals of statistics fundamentals of uh, you know linear algebra fundamentals of machine learning right so all of this has to be learned and it can be a very well planned out activity and typically it will take about a year or so uh, to to get a grip on the core essentials and also to be able to do certain uh, you know projects that you can claim are worthwhile right so if you don't have the background don't worry the background can be acquired okay where should i begin good question now we are in the age of internet everything is available free and uh, the only problem is it looks like this right looks like a maze uh where do i begin which is the right path to follow um now many people start off on their own and uh, especially when you are beginning this journey uh, you are most likely to hit a dead end okay and that may leave you motivated demotivated right so the better thing to do is to go through a guided process okay now once you start your journey through this guided process let us say you first understand statistics and then uh, sql and then uh, fundamentals of programming fundamentals of machine learning okay then the internet is flushed with infinite resources okay and uh, you will no longer be at the position where uh, this person has been shown but you will have a bird's eye view of this particular maze so you will know exactly what is useful out there what is not useful and you know resources there are many if you want to do learning on your own but the recommendation is that uh, to to start it as a as a well regulated process okay maybe through a course or something uh, which will guide you through the process otherwise there is a great likelihood that you will get lost in that particular maze right now where should i begin uh, you know we have addressed this question many times uh, so i will skip it for now is age a barrier right uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you sir is it uh, the questions as a slide you are uh, taking or because the slide has freezed oh yeah we have stuck up on that slide which is a use case of nlp for sales and marketing oh my god no worries no worries so we you can just uh, try to uh, maybe go to the next slide okay one second yeah or maybe you can stop share your screen and then again share it maybe some network droppers there because of which i believe that problem had occurred. okay okay so are you able to see this now uh still we have on the same slide so better i would suggest you if you can uh, stop share your screen again share it okay yes so i believe that will solve the problem yeah what about now uh yes now i can see you yeah okay that <clears throat> screen share so that is this slide i believe right where i can begin yeah yes yes yes, yes. yeah where should i begin right yeah. is age a barrier okay so <clears throat> i hope this this figure is self explanatory age is not not at all a barrier okay now in our experience and uh, i'm talking about ages and uh, you know other uh, institutions uh, this is typically the distribution of uh, if you can call it students of ai and machine learning uh, like i was trying to tell you uh, of course the the bulk of the people are are concentrated in the uh, you know mid 20s or late 20s 
they are at the beginning of their career <clears throat> or a few years experienced but it's not that experienced people have not taken the plunge into this new area of course they have consciously leveraged their existing knowledge and experience right but you do have people with 40 50 60 and you know just to give you examples we've had people with uh, 60 65 years of age uh, also enrolling as students in in uh, you know the course that is being offered by ages right so age is typically not a barrier you know at that age probably the goal of the person was to uh, create a startup of his own right and with that goal the person uh, enrolled okay uh, but people have definitely taken the plunge at uh, various stages of their career and age right now what is the future of uh, ai and ml right the future is i mean all that i can say that this is just the beginning whatever we are seeing now is just the beginning uh, data is being created at an unending rate at an ever increasing rate and uh, the applications also have been rapidly making progress we already have so many ai and ml based systems uh, that we experience on a daily basis so maybe i can just uh, give you an uh, you know incident over here that one day i received a phone call from my bank and uh, you know within the first 10 seconds i could make out that uh, i am talking to an automated system right but it was not a recording it was actually interacting with me so it was asking me questions and based on my answer it was also responding uh, to to my queries and uh, my statements that i made it was very clear to me that uh, there is an ai system at work in the background and it introduced itself as uh, you know my uh, an avatar of my relationship manager okay so normally if if it had been a recorded uh, message i would have kept the phone down but uh, since it was not a recorded message and it was an interactive uh, session initiated by a computer speaking to me in my language and waiting for my responses and responding intelligently to my questions and uh, queries that i had uh, it kept my interest okay so the point here is that we have already reached a level of sophistication where um, <clears throat> we are seeing ai and ml based systems all around us whether we are purchasing online whether we are booking uh, tickets airline tickets uh, whether we are interacting with our computers okay whether we are typing email uh, these days you see that emails uh, complete themselves automatically or the statements automatically right so this is just the beginning and uh, there will be obviously more applications that will be coming in more platforms will get generated more algorithms will get generated okay uh, more and more applications in specific domains will get created and of course the need to program also progressively will go down okay why because we have tools like auto ml uh, which are trying to fill in the boot saying that you don't have to program everything uh the techniques are fairly standard uh, you have to focus on the application the data that is available and maybe prod us in the right direction and uh, you know tools like auto ml will will do the bulk of the coding for you and uh, run the algorithms in the background and generate results for you okay so i think with that i will uh, like to stop here and uh, focus on uh, questions um and i already see some questions so ritin you would want to take uh, yes questions? yes yes very much so uh, i can see that a lot of individuals are participating and they have started a lot of asking questions as well yeah and i believe uh, all of you are uh, uh, most welcome to ask your questions because we have started off with this the q and a session uh, so the first question i i'm taking from uh, sai sirkar i believe he is asking analysts are claiming nowadays that classic machine learning will be replaced by deep learning soon so is it true or how far it is true 
yeah one thing uh, you know deep like i told you deep learning is uh, is is a very specific form of uh, machine learning and uh, it is sophisticated it is able to uh, process natural language it is able to generate natural language it is able to understand audio video movies it is able to also generate audio video movies and so on right uh, <clears throat> so there is nothing like replacement it is an evolution right so the machine learning models are growing sophisticated and deep learning is a is a method of sophisticated machine learning okay uh, there are other machine learning techniques also like uh, reinforcement learning and so on uh, but yes deep learning is something and and you know deep learning depends very much on uh, availability of large amount of data okay so as more and more data becomes available uh, definitely yes uh, sophisticated architectures based on deep learning uh, will become more capable and uh, as far as uh, i showed you the the video the fake interview right it was generated by a deep learning network okay okay so another question in that continuation he is asking that if uh, uh, so if the dl is being replaced do you still suggest us to learn classic machine learning and add on in that question he is asking that how do machine learning and dl are related while learning i believe you already have answered some of that right right so very interesting question ritin and also also he is adding on that do we need to learn the concepts of machine learning and deep learning both or we can study deep learning without any prerequisite of or any knowledge uh, before getting into that deep learning or learning yeah. so uh, you know if you can create a building without uh, you know directly on the 10th floor without creating floor 1 to 9 or without the foundation okay then the answer is a yes right let me put on my video just hold on i think my internet is stable now yes. yeah so <laughs> the the is the way i would answer that question is uh, you need foundations right Uh, you can't generally go to 12th standard without passing to first to you know 11th standard there is a reason why it is being done right uh, i have been emphasizing on statistics i have been emphasizing on uh, domain knowledge i have been emphasizing on fundamentals right uh, otherwise what will happen is you will become a technician okay you will know that uh, idhar khila hai wo usko hathoda leke marna chahiye right Uh, अभी वो कितना मारना चाहिए कितना फोर्स उसको अप्लाई करना है यू नो इफ इट इज अ स्टोन वॉल व्हाट यू शुड बी डूइंग इफ इट इज अ ब्रिक वॉल व्हाट यू शुड बी डूइंग इफ इट इज मेड ऑफ फोम व्हाट यू शुड बी डूइंग राइट सो यू नो ऑल सो सच इक्विवेलेंट डिसीजंस हैव टू बी मेड इन मशीन लर्निंग ओके सो यू नो वेन यू स्टार्ट योर जर्नी इन मशीन लर्निंग एंड सिंस यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डीप लर्निंग uh believe me that unless you understand statistics unless you are comfortable with some of the terms that you learn in fundamental machine learning courses you will really not be able to work with deep learning uh, architectures it is very much essential okay so <clears throat> one it is not possible second don't do it okay don't think you will be able to understand deep learning without understanding the fundamental machine learning algorithm okay so uh, another question uh, somebody is asking that what exactly differs coding and programming basic question but if you can give a quick <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how to <laughs> coding and programming okay <clears throat> well in order to do, in order to program you need to code i would i would just put it that way right <laughs> okay so programming is a is a term and coding is a very specific action okay so i can say that i know programming right so which means i understand what what is meant by uh, variables what are control structures what are data structures right what is our, what are loops so on and so forth okay and the act of writing a program is known as coding so if i actually sit down and and write a program i am doing nothing but coding i believe uh, sai uh, sankar you might have got your answer so another question uh, moshin sheik is asking that uh, will there be ethical problems that uh, might arise as this technology advances 
so most of our session this question most of the indeed they are very much worried about the consequences of these technologies because ai can uh, take the decisions on it itself this is what he is uh, looking forward to asking yeah ethical questions will always be there and uh, that is where you know uh, we have governments and international regulatory bodies uh, you know coming together to break their head over this it's not just about ai or anything right is it ethical to put up a factory and uh, generate chemicals and let the waste chemicals go into a river right have we solved that problem isn't there ethics involved there also aren't you messing up with the environment right so it's not something very specific to ai ml or anything it is a general question and yes those questions do exist uh, even or do come up even in the context of ai and ml right uh, is it ethical to use artificial intelligence for uh, weapon systems okay or you saw the video of the robot right is it ethical to use such a robot in warfare okay because you know such a robot can be ruthless and uh, it can be much faster much more capable okay so ethics uh, is not is not a problem only in ai and ml it, it exists everywhere right uh very very well explained i would say sir and uh, so every time we have that question so there are uh, yeah yeah i think you know let us not not forget what we are currently doing right is everything that we doing ethical let us okay. just answer that question ai and ml is a bit far off another uh, question we would like to take that many uh, somebody is asking so uh, many platform online platform teaches us concepts like uh, operators data types sequences and basic pythons and concepts like decoration modules file handling as advanced python so he is asking how far of learning these things uh, or techniques help us to study the applications of python like machine learning or deep learning and etc and how we can say that we are perfect in that particular language i believe you have touched these points uh, explaining the projects and right right <laughs> see it is like this uh, you know when when you are dealing with data uh you frequently need to slice and dice the data you will be using uh, tools like excel for instance you know if the data size is small okay and uh, when you if you remember the data science uh, block diagram that i showed you finally at some point in time you will come to automation because you would definitely like to put the machine learning models that you have created you would like to really use it in a live and running system okay <clears throat> so the answer here is that uh, the knowledge about programming systems like python or a, or any other language is they are used to very very you know different degrees at different stages right so if you are in the initial stages where you want to deal with uh, let us say data visualization uh, cleaning of data uh, or even building simple models right you don't probably need uh 80 85% of uh, the language facilities okay you can make do with 15 to 20 if you know for loops if you know uh, you know data basic data structures basic control structures right uh, you can do all this activity but if you want to build full proof systems you know which will not crash which will ensure that uh, they will keep running for ages together there is no memory leakage right at that point in time all these advanced things so called advanced things will definitely be required okay so i will not say that uh, in order to start off with uh, data science you need to be an absolute uh, expert in python i will not say that right but at the same time i will also not say that you should not become an expert in python because as you continue through your journey and you come down to automation you will need all those advanced uh, you know uh, file handling facilities interrupt uh, exception handling facilities that all these languages provide okay so the answer to your question is not yes or no or black or white at different stages different skill sets are required okay so another question uh, 
Advait is asking, and I would suggest all the individuals who are still with us. So I believe they are still. I uh, really appreciate that they are interacting. And if anybody would have any questions, guys, please open up. So you will have a brilliant opportunity to uh, answer your all the doubts and get your doubts cleared with the expert. Okay. So we have started getting the questions. So Sirkar is asking a lot of questions. Uh, good to know that he has a lot of doubts. I believe. And uh, so Advait is asking: Is it true that entry-level jobs are not available in the field of data science? Entry level jobs are not available. Not available in the field of data science. This is what his question is. I believe you have touched up that point as well. If yeah, I mean, yeah. So if you can just clarify that point, yeah. That is uh, incorrect to say. You know, uh, one is of course the the field itself is young. Okay, so if you ask for a ten year experience person in data science, where are you get such a person from? Okay. so there are companies who who recruit uh, you know even people fresh out of uh, college right uh, because it is their strategy to uh, take in such people and train them uh, to become future leaders in the organization and uh, so that they also get a chance to uh, build up the domain expertise and knowledge that is required okay so i don't know what who or where you got this information from but uh, uh, there definitely exists um, you know or companies do recruit uh, people who are uh, fresh so called fresh graduates in data science another question there are individuals who are following us on uh, youtube as well uh, so somebody is asking that which electric board interact with python and ml which what electric board Could you please uh, clarify that, uh, Pratik? What do you want to ask? So you might have some typos as well. So we can take another question quickly. Yeah. So uh, Srikar is asking that how can they are able to insert huge data in machines? Example, while in translation of a language processing, like assistance, uh, voice command. Namit, uh, if you're still there, please add on the individuals who are adding up, uh, joining in. So uh, another again, I repeat that question. How can somebody uh, is be, would be able to insert the data a huge data in machine like example while in uh, translation of a language voice assistance need to know every word belong to that knowledge and that data is too huge to be inserted how can it be done sir so maybe a practical uh, yeah so uh, sai here you know there are specific architectures which can ingest huge amount of uh, language data and uh, you know build up a uh, memory internally okay uh, and set up context so uh, you know so if you for instance uh, if you are using uh, uh, let us say specific tools like uh, the mailing system these days gmail for instance as you start typing your uh, mail it it uh, con- you know completes the sentence for you now where is this knowledge coming from it is the coming from the huge amount of email data that uh, you know gmail or even outlook uh, these are sitting on right so they have built systems uh, you know some of the uh, systems could be built based on uh, lstm uh, uh, networks for instance right so they have the capability to take in really large amounts of data in fact they need large amounts of data so that this learning happens uh, internally now by the way learning means it is nothing but uh, links getting generated with uh, probability associated with the links and so on okay so finally it comes down to statistics right so there are specific architectures which have got developed for language based processing there are specific architectures which have got developed for image processing right uh, so you know based on a simple uh, textual description uh, these networks can generate crystal clear pictures like the ones i showed you when i started the lecture right so these are all systems which uh, thrive on huge amount of data so i will not get into the details right now but these are architectures very specific architectures for handling the audio video text and uh, generating the context in the process um i'm muted here okay okay so i believe you have answered very well again a question would be coming up i think my number of questions is not clear time 
uh, when I saw explain it so well, I thought he will clear my doubts and which I haven't anywhere before. Thank you for answering with patience. Okay. So that's why the that session was uh, planned and designed, Shrikha, to uh, get your doubts clear. And thank you so much, sir. And thank you so much. I believe we have answered most of the questions. And uh, thank you for taking the time and interacting with those uh, young budding data scientists, I would say. So who are the data enthusiasts? And some of them, I believe, are working in that data science fields as well. And I believe most of your doubts has been, uh, uh, have been cleared. And still, if you would have any questions, you can write to us. And uh, I'll share quickly my uh, screen. And you can reach out to uh, me or maybe my team if you would have any questions. So if you want to ask further, you can write to us. We would love to uh, answer your questions and if you doubt, if you would have any doubts. So again, thank you so much, guys, for joining us for this uh, live interactive meetup. This is my coordinates and my team coordinates as well. So you can reach out to us. If you would have any questions, you can jot it down. I'll just make it full screen. So uh, I'm Ratan, Ratan Joshi. And uh, again, thank you so much, sir, for uh, this wonderful session. Thank and again, thank uh, thanks for the patient listening of the audience, what we have, what still we have around 46 candidates, I believe. So it's a great session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys, for attending. And thank you, sir, for taking time and clearing the doubts for all the individuals. My pleasure, Ratan. And uh, thanks to everyone. Hope. Your basic questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much.